Como es? And welcome to another Foxtrot Visuals video. Today's video is a fun one. I am participating in Benny Productions' Benny Spooky Eddie War for the second time. This was my submission for last year's contest, and in hindsight, I don't think I've really evolved my style that much, apart of course from having improved some techniques here and there. This year's contest is a lot harder than last year's. The assets are much more generic, and there aren't many individual objects that could be masked out. That being said, I've actually redone this image for about three or four times until I had to settle on one idea because I was already running out of time. I was desperate. There have already been over 1,000 submissions, many of which are truly amazing, especially this one. Holy f and so, I'm pretty certain this will be a very tough competition. Anyway, let's get straight into it. The clouds. Well, I'm not as good as Face Runner or maybe even Benny Productions or even in Create. I hate blending in different clouds together. I think it's the hardest part of any composition that I make. So, yeah, this was a... Uh, a torture for me, but I had to do it since I had to use all of the assets. The next two minutes it's just me trying out different sketches that I made, different composition ideas, until I found something that I really liked. So if you wanna start the video from that part, then feel free to skip to minute 329. Using this wagon's photo, I used the grass to make a foreground because Benny didn't really provide a photo with a foreground that we could use. So we had to improvise and make one of our own. After masking out the tower, I got rid of the door or the window and then I duplicated it into I duplicated it into itself to make it taller and then I yielded the clock. After that, I color matched it with the sky, and the sky is, throughout the whole composition process of this photo at least, is a reference for all my color matching and color grading. For some reason, I lost all my brushes. I couldn't find them anywhere, so I just re-downloaded them. And yeah, there you have them. Now, you can see here that I am asking out the trees and um, I am asking out everything else with such precision which it pains me because I wasn't going to be using them anyway because I hated the whole thing so I just undid the whole thing Control Z in 3, 2, 1 yeah let's try again shall we damas y caballeros now we are back this is a final idea, this is what I came up with, and this is what I'm sticking with from now on. So yeah, I'm just basically using the same epitaph for the whole thing from that church picture. I just copied and pasted the tombstones all throughout the canvas. Then selecting the wagon again, and then using the wagon's pumpkins to place them on the ground to make it look like they spilled uh, in 3 to 1 there. And then on top of that, I used the pumpkins with the faces. Then I took the mountain picture or the cliff picture and I warped them to make them look like little pikes or peaks. Um, just make them look pointy, basically is what I'm trying to say. And then I just masked out the house. Um, I removed the trees and I removed the stairs because I wasn't going to be using them anymore. And now it was time for color grading. Again, the sky is my reference for all of the color grading in this picture. And then I added this color layer to make the fog, of course, with a soft brush and a low opacity. Adding fog to compositions like these is great because it helps us distinguish between the foreground and the middle ground and the background. It gives the image more depth, more realism and it also helps give out you know mysterious vibes to the image which is very well needed on a photo like this for Halloween using another color layer I painted the windows on the towers as well as the house I didn't really care much about the frames 
that were there originally because you cannot really tell the difference in the distance and I was going to blur it out anyway so as long as you could see that something was lit in the house and in the towers that was enough for me using an exposure layer it was time for my favorite part in the whole thing it's the shadows I already pre-visualized that this lightning would be striking on that cross so that's why I made the shadows like that before I placed the, the lightning Using a hue and saturation layer with a high lightness value and the colorize option selected, I painted these highlights on each individual epitaph or tombstone. Is it tombstone or epitaph? I think it's both. I just like calling them epitaphs, so epitaphs. And I also added a brightness adjustment layer on the grass with a bluish tint to make up for the lightness flash which is shining on the ground. At this point, I am adding highlights to everything in a photo using the same technique as the epitaphs or the tombstones, using the hue and saturation adjustment layer with the colorize option enabled. Now to me this is a new one, it's the first time that I ever use glow in my highlights. I got this from another YouTuber's video that I just watched um, recently and I think that this alone makes the photo look 100% better in an instant. Now I know that I might have overdone it, the glow on the lightning there is way too much, it's way too exaggerated. but I think I fixed it later, so that's good. For the pumpkins insides I used a combination of solid colors and gradients to give it depth and then some glow using the layer effects. And of course the light from the pumpkins had to shine on the ground, even just so barely. Then adding the particles that Benny provided and then doing some color grading using the color lookup tables and the camera raw filter, I consider this photo complete. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and happy Halloween.